Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well today. So it is a beautiful, sunny Sunday afternoon and I just got home from lunch with some friends and I want to do some sewing this afternoon and evening. So I thought I would do a crafty sewing vlog today and tomorrow. And I have a really fun fabric package to share with you guys today because the day that this video goes up is the day that the new Rifle Paper Company fabric collection is launching. And this collection is so amazing and they very kindly sent me two of the fabrics. So let me show those to you really quickly. The Rifle Paper Company fabric launches are something that I always look forward to. So I'm really excited about this one. This one features 48 new fabrics, which is so amazing. And they sent over two for me to show you guys. So let me show you what they sent. So here is the amazing box they sent over with some fabrics and a few other things, which I'll show you as well. Look how pretty everything is, but let me show you the fabric. So the first fabric that they sent over is the Menagerie Garden Rayon in Cream, and I love the print on this. It's an orange and blue kind of delicate floral pattern, and the rayon fabric has a lovely drape. It's perfect for things like dresses and making something really flowy, so I'm very excited to work with this one. This also comes in a beautiful mint green color, which I might end up ordering in the future, so that's the first one. And then they also sent over this beautiful blue and white cotton. This definitely gives me the grand millennial style vibes that I've been seeing on TikTok a lot lately. I love this one. I think this is the one I'm going to start with. And then just a few other fun things from this package. They sent over one of their new mechanical pencils. I'm very excited that they've launched these. I think this will be so much fun to use. And I'll definitely use this as I am working on my sewing projects. Then there's a beautiful set of thank you cards. Hopefully you can see that okay. These I think are so pretty and just very cheerful looking. And then they sent a new notebook, which will be perfect for keeping notes on my sewing projects. And I love the print on this one. And then lastly, they sent over a beautiful candle. Look at the packaging on the box. Let me open this up. I am so excited about this. I had actually looked at this candle in a local boutique recently because this color is perfect for all the colors I use on my desk. So I'm really looking forward to using this candle. And this has the most amazing pine scent. It's just a beautiful candle. So thank you so much to Rifle Paper Company for this beautiful gift. I'm so excited to work with this new fabric. And if any of you are interested in checking out the new fabric collection, I would recommend doing it sooner rather than later because they do tend to sell out quite quickly over on the website. And if you are interested in checking out the fabric or anything else on the website, I have a coupon code that they very kindly gave me for you guys. So you can use the code Lauren15 for 15% off of your purchase through February 28th. So now on to the fun part. Let me show you what I'm thinking about making with the cotton fabric. So for the blue and white cotton fabric, I am thinking about making something very similar to this top that I made last year. This is made out of a really soft, flowy silk velvet, but I think it would look so nice in a little bit of stiffer fabric like cotton. So this is a really simple design that I made just using measurements. It is shirred across the entire bodice and then has these super fun sleeves that I think would look so pretty in the blue and white fabric. So this is what I'm thinking I'm going to do with that fabric. So I'm going to get started on that tonight. So I am super excited to get started with this fabric, but the first thing that I need to do is run it through the washer because this is a cotton fabric. It will probably shrink up quite a bit and I want to make sure that my shirt can be washable. So I'm going to wash and dry this and then I can cut out my project. So I'm going to run and put this in the washer and make some tea. And then I think I'm going to revisit my old video about the pink shirt just so I can double check how I made that project and get a few ideas and take some notes for this one. And then I'm going to get started at sewing once this is done. So my fabric is out of the dryer and I am ready to get started on this project. The sun went down and it got so cold in my house. So I changed into a sweater and I'm nice and cozy. So I think I'm going to put a movie on and get started on this project. I've made the same design a few times before. So I think it's going to go pretty quickly other than the shirring that always takes a while. So it's a good opportunity to watch a movie or a TV show or something. So let me show you what I'm working with. So I've washed and dried the fabric. I usually wash the cotton fabric on a hot temperature just to make sure that it shrinks up as much as it's going to. And it always comes out of the wash really nicely. So I am ready to cut out my project. 
So I have a very fancy system for storing my sewing patterns. They are in Ziploc bags. And this is the shirt blouse pattern that I made a couple of years ago. This is just based on doubling the bust measurement and adding a seam allowance and then just cutting out a little bit of an armhole in the side. So it's very simple. I will link to that full tutorial so you can see all of the measurements and everything, but it's very simple. And then for the sleeves, I do wanna do those long sleeves that I did on the pink blouse. I have a floral blouse like this but it has short sleeves so I think the long sleeves will be a little something different and really nice for the transitional season as we go from winter into spring so I'm going to get started cutting this out and I will check in with you guys in a few minutes So this is the original pattern that I made for a short puppy sleeve for the first blouse like this that I made. And I really like this pattern. It was very simple to create. I just traced the curve from the armhole that I made on the main part of the blouse and then added plenty of width here so that this could gather up into elastic. So all I'm going to do is extend this into a long sleeve. I might make this angle a little bit more gentle here just because otherwise it's a lot of fabric and I don't think I need quite that much fabric. So I'm just going to kind of play it by ear as I cut it out and see what I think looks good. You can say I lost my mind. I will keep on holding my head high. Even if the sky is falling down. Okay, I think this is actually going to work with this same angle. I wasn't thinking I would need it to be quite so wide, but I really like the way that looks gathered up here. This is cut on the fold, by the way, just in case you were wondering why it looks like half of a sleeve. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out the second one. Trust in our wings to fly. Sometimes we're crashing down, but we get up and start from the ground. Okay, so I have everything cut out and I can go ahead and start assembling the top. So the first thing I'm going to do is just sew the side seams and then go ahead and hem both the top edge and the lower edge. Then I'll be ready to sew all of my rows of shirring. I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down So I'm actually going to be good and mark the distance for my rows of shirring it today. And I thought I would show you guys a little trick that my mom always uses when she sews. And I was reminded of it recently um, when we were working on stuff for my sister's wedding because she got out her trusty circle of soap. So if you are like me and don't ever have a tailor's chalk or one of those fancy invisible pins around, you can use soap to do marking on a fabric and of course it's just going to wash away. I would just make sure it doesn't have any like strong 
dies or anything that you're worried might stay but it leaves a really good line of indication here for stitching and then it will just go away with water. So pretty convenient. I had just completely forgotten that she always used to do that. So I'm glad to be reminded of it. I am marking these rows of shirring one inch apart. And I started three quarters of an inch from the top just so there's not too much of a thick ruffle at the top. I want that to be a little bit more subdued and then one inch apart for each row of the shearing and we'll see how this looks. I think if I zoom in, you can see the lines a little bit better. It's not super dark, but it is definitely easy to see. You can see that one right there really well. Okay, so the shirring is done and I really like how this looks. I think this fabric looks so pretty with this type of effect. And I'm glad I left this a little bit longer here just so you can see more of the print of the fabric. So now I am ready to move on to the sleeves. So I think I'll start by doing the sleeve side seams and then I will hem the bottom and add some elastic here to gather this into a cute little ruffle and then just make a little elastic casing at the top and then those will be ready to attach. Okay, so I finished one of the sleeves. So let me show you what I did and what I'm about to do for the second one. So after I sewed the side seams, I just did a narrow hem here and then stitched elastic to fit around this part of the cuff so that we have this cute ruffle detail. And then I just added an elastic casing here and then sewed it into the armhole very simply. So that's what I'm going to repeat on the second sleeve now. So I've already turned under my elastic casing here. So I'm going to top stitch this. And then I've also done my narrow hem or folded it up. So I'm just going to go top stitch this down and then add the elastic and then attach it to the shirt and then I will be done. Hey guys, so it is the next day and I did manage to finish the shirt last night. So let me show you how it turned out. 
I think it turned out so adorably. I really love this style and I think the fabric is perfect for a technique like shirring because it just looks so cute going straight across with the pattern. So yeah, I absolutely love it. I will try it on tomorrow for you guys because I need to go to work and so I don't have a lot of time this morning. But I also decided to make a little matching hair bow with a barrette. How cute is this? I think this turned out so cute. I've seen so many hair bows with more romantic styles of clothing lately, so I just thought it would be a fun thing to pair together. So I'm really excited to show you what it looks like on. So one project done, and when I get home tonight, I'm going to start on the second fabric. From that fabric, I want to make a wrap dress, and I am planning to try to make a pattern. So I'm going to start that project when I get home this evening, and I will talk to you guys then. So it is quite a bit later now. I had a little bit of a break when I got home and had some dinner, but I am now ready to work on some pattern making. And I am really excited to experiment with the idea that I have for this rayon fabric. I think this would look so pretty as a wrap dress. So that's what I'm going to be trying to create today. So I have my close fitting bodice block here on my computer. This is one that I made using the instructions from Metric Pattern Cutting for Women's Wear, which is where I have been getting all of my drawings instructions and I am going to convert this into a wraparound style top. So I think it should be a pretty simple process. I'm not 100% sure but I'm going to play around with this for the next little while. I want this dress to have a simple fitted wrap style top and then have a tiered gathered skirt so that should be a pretty easy skirt to create. So the main thing I'm concerned about is the bodice so I am going to sit here and do a little bit of work on this and I will show you what I come up with. Okay, after a little playing around with these pattern pieces, here's what I'm going to start with. I just combined my shoulder and waist darts for the front piece and then um, added a waist dart and transferred the fullness from the shoulder dart to the back piece as well. And then I extended out the front piece to make it a wraparound style. So I think what I'm going to do first is just test out these two pieces out of the fabric and see how they fit. And then I will work on the rest of the design a little bit later. Okay, so I went ahead and assembled the front and back pieces of the bodice just to see how it fit. And I made just a couple of adjustments. I took about 5 eighths of an inch off of the armholes because they were a little bit tight. And then I also removed about an inch all the way around the neckline. And then when I was sewing my darts on the front and back actually, I just lowered them by about 5 eighths of an inch because the placement was just a tiny bit off. Um, so those few adjustments and now it fits really nicely. So I think I'm going to cut out a second one to use for the lining and then I will experiment a little bit with sleeves. All right, you guys know I love a good fun sleeve. So I went ahead and made one sleeve to test out my idea and I really love how this turned out. It has a cute little keyhole detail and then a drawstring here at the bottom and then it's gathered at the top to make a nice puppy sleeve. So let me show you how I made this. So to cut out my fabric, I used my basic sleeve block and this is again made from the same instructions from the metric pattern cutting for women's wear book. And all I did was add a little bit of extra width here in the center of the sleeve and then shorten this a little bit. I saved the little piece that I cut out for the keyhole just so I can make sure to match it on this side. So I'm gonna cut that out really quickly. And now I'm just going to turn this edge under twice and press it and then top stitch it to create a really tiny narrow hem here. Okay, so now I can go top stitch this. 
oh my iron's making sounds and then after i top stitch it i will sew up the side seam of the sleeve and serge this edge and then i will also run serging all the way around the bottom of the sleeve so that it's ready to turn under for the elastic casing and to make the elastic casing all i'm going to do is turn this under about an inch and then just top stitch all the way around the edge of the sleeve i think i said an elastic casing but it's a drawstring casing and then I'm also going to run two rows of gathering stitches along the top of the sleeve. So it's a pretty simple design, but I think it turned out so cute. Okay, so that's all there is to the main part of the sleeve. So now I just need to make that drawstring. So to do this, I used two strips of fabric and sewed them into one longer strip just to save fabric because I had some pieces about this size um, left over after cutting out the main part of the bodice. So I'm just going to sew these together and then sew this into one long tube of fabric that I can then turn right side out into a drawstring. Okay, so I just finished making the drawstring, so I'm just going to add this to the sleeve and then pull up the gathering threads. Okay, so that is two sleeves done. I'm ready to add these to the bodice, so I'm going to do that really quickly and I will be right back. Okay, so the sleeves are now attached. I think this is looking so adorable. I'm really excited about it. I need to go try it on just to make sure that the sleeves are sitting the right way. I lined it just in some white cotton muslin just to save on the fabric because I don't wanna waste this beautiful fabric on lining. And there is this tiny slit here in the side that I added that will um, help the wrap to work properly. I will be adding ties to the sides. So one will go through that little slot here and around the back and then it will tie together on the side. Now, originally I was thinking I would do a tiered skirt, but I want to make sure I have plenty of fabric for the skirt. So I'm going to try this on and just play around with a few styles and I will let you guys know what I come up with. So I just tried the bodice on and I really love how it looks. I love the sleeves so much. I'm very excited with how they have turned out. So I was playing around a little bit with what I want the skirt to look like. And I think because of the amount of fabric that I currently have left, I'm going to do a pretty simple gathered skirt. And then I'll play around a little bit with how the hemline sits. I might decide to curve it in the front a little bit. So it should be pretty simple. And I wasn't planning to finish this tonight, but I'm so close to being done I think I'm just going to do it so I will get back with you guys soon so I've gone ahead and added the little waist ties here at the edges of the front bodice pieces and now I'm just going to add a very simple gathered skirt so I have just put together three rectangle pieces of fabric the two front ones are smaller to match to the bodice front pieces and then a wider one in the back and I've gone ahead and run a small hem along the front edges and then two rows of gathering stitches on at the top. And I'm just going to gather this to fit to the bodice. we have a dress I love how this is looking I'm so excited about it so the last thing I need to do is just to 
tuck under the ends on these little ties and tack those down by hand and then this will be done. I'm so excited that I got it done tonight. So what I think I'm going to do is change into my comfy clothes and make some tea and sew this and watch the new episode of How I Met Your Father. I've been watching that on Hulu and finish this up. Good morning friends. So I have just been up taking some photos of this blouse and I absolutely love it. Let me show you how it turned out. So here's how it looks on. I really like the spacing that I did on the sharing this time. I did it one inch apart and I think in the past I had done five eighths of an inch apart and I think this worked a lot better. So I'm really happy with that and I also like that the sharing stops right around like a high waistline. I have on high waisted jeans and they stop right here at this the same place. So I feel like that fits really nicely and almost gives this little peplum effect. And then the sleeves did turn out a little shorter than I was initially thinking. I always forget how long my arms are. Um, but they were kind of like a three quarter length sleeve and I really like the puffiness of them. I also think the shearing works so well. I may have said this previously in this video, but I think the shearing works so well with this print because it is almost like a stripe in effect with the way the print is designed. So I absolutely love it. I'm really happy with it. And I think the hair bow is so fun as well. I'm not 100% sure this is something that I would wear all the time with it, but I think it's really, really cute. So yeah, I'm going to try on the dress now and take some photos of that. But I feel like this has been such a productive few days of sewing and I'm really excited about about this. Side note, I know the quality is not the best on my phone and it is on my list to invest in a vlogging camera this year for these sorts of videos, so hopefully they will improve in quality soon. So I have swapped to the dress now and I just love how comfortable this is. This rayon fabric is so soft and lightweight and nice to wear. So let me show you a little bit of a better look at how this one turned out. So here is how the dress looks. I think my favorite part is the sleeves. I love how these look. I think I could still fine tune the fit a little bit at the bodice, but I do really like how it turned out. I pulled the tie around to the side here just to tighten up the fit a little bit on the bodice because it was a little bit loose. And then the skirt is about midi length. I've just tried it on with my Veja sneakers, which are some of my favorites. And I think this will be the perfect little spring outfit with a denim jacket. So I'm really happy with it and looking forward to getting some wear out of this one. So for now, I'm going to go take some photos of this dress and I have the perfect flowers to use to photograph with it. Let me show you. I think the colors on these go perfectly together, the orange and the dress and the peachy tones and these roses. So that will make for some fun photos. So I'm going to go get started on it that and I will check back in with you soon. Gold rings. Gold rings. So I finished all of the photos and I'm really happy with how they're looking. So I'm going to edit those for a little bit. I need to go to work in about 30 minutes. So I'm going to just get done what I can before that time. Hey guys, so it's quite a bit later now and I'm not really sure where I left you because I was running late and running out the door. So I've changed into a sweater because it's definitely still too cold for a cute spring dress right now. 
Um, but I'm really excited because tonight my sisters and I are going to watch the first episode of The Gilded Age, which is a new series created by the maker of Downton Abbey, which is probably my favorite show. So I'm so excited about it. But before we do that, I am going to go make some hot apple cider. I will show you the recipe that I use. It's one that my mom always used growing up. So I'm going to go work on that. That's probably all the sewing that I'm going to do for this video, but I'm really looking forward to a nice cozy evening. And I will let you guys know what I think of the first episode of the series. So this is the cookbook with the cider recipe that my mom always made growing up. I think we got this at the Little House on the Prairie house, which we visited when I was a very, very small child because my grandmother was living in that part of Kansas. Um, let me show you the recipe. So it's very, very easy and I'm going to leave the brown sugar out because I find it sweet enough without it, but it definitely tastes really good with the brown sugar. So I am going to put this together and set it to simmer. When my sister Felicity was little, she thought that it was called apple spider and that the whole cloves were spiders. So she used to ask my mom for apple spider without the spiders in it, which I just think is the funniest thing. So I always think of that when I make this. So we watched the first episode of The Gilded Age and I really enjoyed it. Um, it definitely has similar vibes to Downton Abbey, similar aesthetic and all of that. So if you like Downton Abbey, I think you will enjoy this. I really liked the first episode. I'm excited to see where the series goes, but I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this vlog up here for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of these sewing projects I've been working on for the past couple of days. And thank you for spending your time here on my channel. Don't forget to check out the new rifle paper company fabric collection today i'm going to be ordering one more fabric from the collection and you can use my code lauren 15 for 15 percent off your purchase if you are new to my channel and you haven't subscribed yet you can go ahead and do that by clicking the red button down below if you're interested thank you guys again for watching and i will talk to you very soon in a new video bye